Well, thanks for joining us live on Smart Family. I'm Daphne Monroe. And I'm Connie Cola, and our goal is to keep it smart and simple, and you're going to learn something new every day. Today's smart topic, the health of our children. Do you know the number of kids with developmental and learning disabilities has actually increased 17% just in the last 10 years? Wow. One in six children is now diagnosed with a learning disability. Yes, and research shows those numbers are driven largely by autism and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder diagnosis. It seems parents nowadays push for an official diagnosis so they can get their children the help they need. But what if we could actually help our children without any medication at all using just their own brain waves that's what several doctors in the valley are trying with a new technique created by nasa it's called neurofeedback and it's helping 11 year old mick who has been using it to help him concentrate how are you doing today good okay so we'll play your favorite here okay uh, mick is doing neurofeedback training okay put the sensor there it's giving him awareness of what his mind and brain is doing and how he's focusing and is he taking his time, is he concentrating. Is it like any other video game? Well, it's kind of like Jack and Daxter. There's an active uh, sensor on his head. It, it picks up his brainwave activity and the controller is tied into his brain waves. The character won't move, it won't jump, it will continually vibrate, and so he won't be able to be successful at the game unless he gets his brain in the proper direction. When it vibrates, what do you do? I just take a deep breath and, you know, focus on the game. As, as a result of that, I've, I'm able to keep most people off meds for stimulants, uh, kids and adults. Um, it helps for mood, anxiety, depression, um, sports performance, grades. I think it's pretty neat because it helps me in school. It's going to help me in life. And I'm learning to focus on other like, stuff. I mean, I, before I could barely focus on shooting at basket and basketball. Now I make almost every one I shoot. So it's, it's kind of like going to the gym for your brain. So if you get in better shape physically, you're going to be in better shape, and it's the same mentally. Isn't that amazing to see? And joining us now is Dr. Sanford Silverman. He's a psychologist and the owner of the Center for Attention Deficit and Learning Disorders in Scottsdale. Nice to see you. Nice Thanks see for you. being Thanks here. Thanks for having me. So you've been doing this for about 16 years yes, now. Yes, I have. And I would think the technology has really progressed in the last few years. It has. They're coming up with more visuals, better ways of detecting the brain activity, giving more visual and auditory feedback to make it more enjoyable, and yeah. also to give good feedback so one can change their brain. Yeah. When you look at Mick, he's like a lot of kids, ants in the pants, right? Yes, right. It's hard to get kids to focus these days. So tell us a little bit about what was really happening there. What were we really seeing with that machine? What he was doing is he was, he was playing a game that was tied into his brain activity. And when he focused and increased his attention and stayed calm and actually reduced his stress and anxiety, he would have more beneficial results. The controller would work more optimally. Yeah. Why is this so useful and why is it working so well? Well, because we, we jump ahead to, to give medication yeah. and, and, you know, as you just said about ADD and autism and, you know, the medication is forcing the brain or trying to get it chemically to behave differently. We can actually, with this kind of technology and, and feedback, uh, get it to really work properly, mm -hmm. you know, given the proper resources and feedback. So is it, is it electromagnetically kind of recircuit, making it, fixing the circuitry there, uh, like, you know, kind of rebooting it, or is it actually building brain muscle there to do it correctly? It's kind of doing both. Uh, you know, our brain is it's very dynamic, it's constantly changing, and when, when we're focusing in a meeting or in class, we need to produce enough fast activity called beta waves. Mm -hmm. We want our slower waves to reduce. If we're going to sleep at night, we don't want to have all those fast waves we might be an insomniac. So the ability for the good healthy mind and brain to shift into states depending upon what activity we're involved in yeah. is what's going to determine your outcome and success. We're looking at some of those beta wave graphics right now. Tell yes. me what we're seeing there. Well in the, in the, the uh, map all the way to the top right, if we look at that, we can see a real excess amount of fast activity called beta waves. And we see it in the top part of the head, or this, area, this frontal, prefrontal area. Mm -hmm. And that has to do with executive functions, how we manage our emotions, shift our thinking and attention, uh, being able to organize our thoughts, not be impulsive, think ahead, project into the future so we can make good choices. Okay. 
It is amazing when you think of how much we know about the brain now and how you can tell each little part and what it actually is doing for you, yes. that you can target in on a specific place and really work yes. on and that. And that's game. the advantage of this in using a brain map, or also called a quantitative EG. So we're not forcing the brain just to behave a certain way by exciting it with a stimulant. We're actually targeting areas that we can train. Yeah. So w when you're talking about all the different brain disorders or dysfunctions that mm -hmm. are out there, are, w w what would you say you're finding the most success using this with? Uh, it's probably used more for ADD than anything else. However, it really affects your mood, learning problems, learning disabilities, autism, uh, developmental delays, uh, memory, because so much is tied into our nervous system and brain. So if we can condition that and we do it properly, we can get very good results in many ways. Okay, and how long treatment? What are, you, what are we looking at here? How many times do you need to do this? Uh, ch change usually occurs pretty quick with it. Okay, we're laying the foundation, they're quick, and the brain learns, but to get it to really stay with you on an ongoing basis to maintain itself, mm -hmm. you want to do enough sessions, and that is always, of course, on an individual basis, but we want to do a good 20 sessions, sometimes more, yeah. for long-term results. What are some of those um, complications or risks that people need to know about? Mm -hmm. They really aren't with this because it's a natural approach. If you, if you, you, if you do it QEG guided, a brain map, and you, and you have experience with it, this is not a one-size-fits-all to purchase a program and put a, a lead on your head and just train your brain. It's serious <laughs> right, stuff. Right. And you really have to know what you're doing and developmentally who yeah. you're dealing with and what, uh, what issues you're working on and what's really appropriate for that person. Yeah, really, really amazing uh, far-out stuff that's very cool. Yeah. How's Mick doing? He's doing really well. It's helped him change quite a bit. All right. Well, it's nice to meet you, Dr. Nice Silverman. Thanks for being here. Interesting information. Hey, if you'd like more, you can head to our website. We're at abc15.com. Click on the Lifestyle tab. Def? Ah, uh, well, thanks, Connie. Some really good information. But let's see what, uh, sounding off on our Smart Family 15 Facebook page about do you think kids can train their minds to break through learning disabilities or is medication inevitable? Well, Valletta Camp says, it's my belief that we as parents need to help our kids find a way to work with their different abilities rather than trying medication. Use chemicals for them as a last resort, not as an easy fix. And Rachel Miller says, the mind is a powerful tool. I believe that we can do a lot of healing without conventional medicine. If people would just give it an honest try. I like that one. And Bell Wilson Stevenson says, trying, training can work sometimes. For times when it doesn't work, I think people should first try a possible diet and exercise changes before jumping to meds. All really good comments. So join in on the conversation. You know you can find us on facebook.com forward slash smartfamily15. We're reading your comments.